Okay, we thank you for uh, staying with us on the show, TMI, lovely Thursday morning. Uh, of course, we get the conversation started on the outcome of the just concluded APC presidential primaries. It's been a very thorny weekend, and uh, the earlier part of the week was also very, very counter so to speak, uh, considering how it all started. From uh, Friday last week, uh, delegates started arriving in Abuja, and all through the weekend, and uh, they were in Abuja, is one issue or the other. Uh, at the beginning, uh, the major talking point was uh, the issue of a consensus. To be or not to be, somewhere along the line, the national chairman of the party came forward to uh, announce the name of the Senate president as a consensus. He also claimed that uh, Mr. President gave the backing to that announcement. But uh, immediately that announcement was made, reactions started pouring in. In fact, some of those reactions with uh, anger that he wasn't speaking on behalf of the NWC or the Northern Governors and what have you. But uh, as, as it were, it didn't really start out well, but somehow, so, somehow it has ended well. From almost about 28 or 23 presidential aspirants, it was eventually narrowed down to five, and from five to three, and from three to two, and ultimately a winner has emerged. But interestingly, uh, this prediction has been on uh, as far as I can remember. So what was all this drama about? Anyway, I've got with me in the studio uh, Comrade Collins uh, Amadeo Sarai is a politician, public affairs commentator. I'd like to thank you very especially, Comrade, for coming on the show. Thank you. Very good morning. Good morning, Edward Light. Good morning, Nigeria. Let me also welcome to the show uh, Derek Mwawo. Derek is a grassroots politician, public affairs commentator. Thank you for joining us, Derek. A very good morning to you. A very good morning to your viewers. Okay, so let's let's get started. Um, the results came, and uh, with the margin, you can actually uh, appreciate um, the fact that uh, Jagaban will always be Jagaban, and that played out yesterday. If we just take an excerpt of how it played out, uh, the former Lagos State Governor scored 1,271 votes to defeat his closest challenger, Rotimi Amechi, who polled 316 votes. Vice President Yemi Oshiba just scored 235 to come third. Others trailing are Ahmed Lawan, 152, Yaya Bello, 147, Dave Omahi, 28, Professor Ben Ayadi, 37, and several others. Well, others are still there, but uh, this is what we have. The likes of uh, Pastor T Tunde Bakari uh, got no votes. Uh, it was zero score. And uh, I think one or two other persons. Rocha Sokrocha. Rocha Sokrocha got uh, four? Or no right? votes. No votes. Zero votes. Okay. So uh, interesting how it's played. But let's, let's get started. Why all this drama? If we knew this is where we're coming to ultimately, why all this drama? Yes. Thank you very much. <clears throat> there was need for the drama because, one, uh, there were a lot of interests. It's a government in power, and there are a lot of intricacy. You know, many a time people will tell you it's always hard to take power from government in power. And also with all the instrument of government around, sometimes people feel with that they can easily muzzle their way even when they are not popular. They can easily get into it. And I think that was what we almost saw at the early stage, at the middle stage, almost at the end till where some persons fell uh, because uh, they do assume some persons were not too close to the presidency based on their own imagination. And they felt uh, the National Working Committee tool uh, and the presidency could fully uh, determine what happens. Okay. Uh, but however, I think they were, they were playing out a script that was nowhere drafted. Why did I say that? You saw that the president over the time have always preached integrity. 
have always preached not to be part of injustice, not to be part of corruption in any form. And he was not ready for anybody to use his name to, to drag him into such, especially when the planner or the drafter are not drafting it well. You know, sometimes even the president is not corrupt, or a governor is not corrupt, or those who are using the name of the governor or the president to constitute news, huh? if they can draft it in a way, it will almost look so. But because you also have some persons who are also very intelligent and vast, they are following you bumper to bumper, they are matching you strength to strength, thinking for thinking, in some cases even thinking more than you, yeah. and at that point, they will be able to expose what you intend doing. Yeah. And that was, that was what you saw. Now we saw that there were a lot of uh, intricacies that was going on, interest going on, screening some persons who some believe were not serious, were just there to, 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 to make it look rowdy. Mm. But at the end, we had it was now 0 to 3, later 0 to 2. And now for those who were also screaming that based on whatever interest it were, came up and said, no, if consensus will not be, then all of us must go. If you go to the field. <laughs> yes. And the president at that point, being a Democrat, had no choice. Said, OK, if that's what you want. But the one that was screened by the Oyegu committee, the one that was, please, all of you come to the field. Come, go to the podium. Hold the mic and tell them if you are interested. If you are interested, let it begin from there. If you are not interested, then use your own man to say you are not interested. So you wouldn't say anybody screened you out. So we'll not begin to have litigation issues after that. Mm. Because I think party had to learn on area where consensus is not working. Yeah. Management of wanting to allow you, OK, you are not angrily being disqualified. But based on zonal arrangement, can you please allow justice to reign? Mm. If they feel no, that there is nothing like zoning arrangement in the Constitution of Nigeria, even if party formulates it by way of saying arrangement, Sometimes when you go before the court of law, you can be defeated because the constitution didn't know that. Even if the constitution says there should be an avenue for rotation. But however, how was it spelled out? Is it the way the party constitution is going about it or the party leadership are going about it? Yeah. If there is any slight deviation from what the constitution stipulates, yeah. then there will be a problem. Yeah. And I think parties are more guided because parties have had this issue over the time. Where you go to court at the end, you end up not feeding any, anybody. So I want to give kudos to the party because I knew, even before I left Benin for Abuja, yeah. I knew we were going to have a very wonderful and peaceful primary. Because why did I say that? I, I, I had two references that I saw in Benin APC primary mm. that gave me the, the strength, conviction. the conviction that this is going to go. Okay, if you go to Ekobaraha, for example, let, let me, let primaries, me push, yes, let me push it was there. wonderful. Let me, let me push okay. you there. Let me push you there. I, I, I'll get you in here. Um, uh, Derek, um, at the start of this primary, the initial stage, uh, there are those who felt that some of the comments made by Mr. President almost created a crisis situation for the party. For example, saying uh, he should be allowed to determine his successor, even though his media aides later came out to say, look, uh, it was twist twisted out of contest and all of that. Uh, do you think some of the um, actions inactions, statements, body language of Mr. President almost created that crisis situation that we saw in the earlier stages of this power What What you just said now reminds me of the, the photograph of Mr. President where he was he, he seated on a, a sofa and was using to pick to remove a, <laughs> you know, knee scrap or full scrap from his teeth. And Mr. President seemed to have this kind of laid back attitude towards um, issues, however, however serious the issue might be, there's a way he, his body language tend to speak, I don't care, into such situations as it were. Uh, well, um, what uh, Mr. President and every other member of APC, big whips, people with clouds, uh, did, uh, you know, I cannot say that they were not uh, in tandem with the polity of Nigeria. Uh, we tend to enjoy when the polity is heated up. 
you know, I don't really <laughs> know what we gain by mostly making political arrangements last minute. You know, we, we just, the leadership tend to keep everybody in suspense, in suspense until uh, the last minute they will just nail it. And as soon as they nail it, you see the temple will just, just die down. Calm down, you know, automatically. And um, I don't know where we, Nigeria, where we learned this kind of polity from. I don't, it's hardly anywhere else in the world, you know, where the polity, we suppose will say this, leadership will say this, the establishment on the whole will maintain another position. But at the end of the day, or two minutes to the deal, day or the deal time, you will just see calmness and resolution automatically. So that um, Mr. President has been known, you know, to say things. But when it comes to implementation, I'm also very sure that he knows that he owes Jagaban. Whether you want to accept it or not, he knows he owes him. And um, who do not know a member of APC? There's one thing about Mr. President I have noticed. He tends to want to keep to agreement. However, however, um, do I say bad? That might be too strong a word to use. It might be to the generality of the people who, who are in the establishment or members, you know, of the political party. Before he became president, before he won and was um, 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 sworn in as president of the Federal Republic of, Ni of Nigeria, he has promised, we heard from the grapevine, that he promised Tinubu that after the expiration of his tenure, he will give his support to Paula Ahmed Tinubu to become the flag bearer of APC, and he will further support him to win the presidency. So I will say that in the presence of important dignitaries in this country, it would have been issue of integrity in fighting to maintain his integrity if he had not own up, if he had not agreed and own up to his gentleman agreement with Bola Ametinibu. And that was what played that when we saw Bola Ametinibu when he went to uh, which state now to campaign in the southwestern Ogun states to campaign and he might he strategic that was very strategic. So I think Mr. President I forgot it. He used that avenue to remind him. And he, the artists did them bidding to that election. When the presidency reacted, uh, uh, those comments. Uh, those are sacrifices. Yes. It was not the president that reacted. Those who are, reacted. who are in his payroll, they have to you know, react. Of course, they have to. This is the president we are talking about. He reminded him how he has failed three, on three occasions. How he cried. How he has promised not to ever offer himself to run to be president of Nigeria. And he went to wake him up from slumber to say, hey, come on, we can get it done. And they actually, you know, with the support of Nigerians, he got it done. Yeah. So I think that is worth something. And that is what, it's what uh, Mr. President throwing his weight behind him. Okay. More, let's uh, talk about, um, because um, I've heard people say that state governors are the real owners of the political parties within the context of Nigeria. I mean, we, we saw that play out in the uh, PDP primaries, we also saw that play out in the APC primaries. The national chairman of the APC came out to say, look, there is a consensus candidate in the person of Senator Ahmed Lawan. The governors can know, we're not aware there is a consensus candidate. We want to seek audience with Mr. President. They went to see Mr. President. Mr. President, according to them, I told them um, um, he has not uh, giving his backing to any consensus candidate. And then they came out. At the end of the day, from what transpired, it looks like uh, what we eventually saw was based on the support of the governors, as it were. Can you, can you give me your perspectives along those lines? Uh, to an extent, when the governors own to the people ideas, in most cases, they skate through. We have had incumbent governors who have lost senatorial tickets if they actually own the party. Within their own states, sitting governor lost a senatorial ticket. We have seen that. We are seeing governor being maligned by other governors. But want to agree with what played out in APC, for example. 
where you had the northern governors forum, even the governors forum themselves, had over the time agreed and said, let's talk in unison. We saw in PDP, for example, they have South South Governors Forum where they even made arrangement and alignment, but at the end, it was something different. Yeah. Because it has to do with individual integrity. Even if you call it a, a, a 12 player team, if some choose to be deviant, they will be deviant. No matter the, the positivity or the strategic plan they had together. So we have seen them, we have seen them happen. But however, governors had force. Now what not another governor did, not all of them, some of them did, because even some of the governors from the north still blazed themselves for the primaries in APC. Yes. So many, they deviated completely from that arrangement. Individual interest. ideology, yeah. individual interest played out. Even the Senate president, who ordinarily is supposed to be the leader of the Northern Caucus, being the Senate president, who by virtue of being the third person, his position is even bigger than the governor's, the, that of the governor. But choose to also play that and campaign even right in, in, in that venue for people to vote for him. So it became a personal interest or an interest of some. But however, thank God for democracy. They all went all out. And that is why you can see the respect all of the candidates have given to our national leader. Because he did not, he did not win them with respect. He won them with a margin to show that you guys are my team. I have not given you freedom. You are still with me. And you are much. If 10 of you are pulling out, we still have about 50 of you, even behind you, that are still learning and are all out there to do this job. Politics is a teamwork. You must have a leader. You must have people who are grooming you. It is only when you are grooming four, and the four chooses to, to work out, you become empty. But when you are training over 50, five leaves, you still have 45 teams. And I tell you, to be that 45, it will not be easy. Okay. So that exactly what work player. Okay. The governors, the northern governors, I dug my cap for them. For the APC, what they did, they, they, were, they were steadfast. They were able to prove the point that this is how the gentleman and red military should be. Okay. In APC, the north have done 80. It. it was time to go to the south. Okay. Because what, com what goes around could Constant. come around. Absolutely. If we don't maintain our stand, we don't know how it ends. Because sometimes in this game of politics, it's not about you saying we have majority number of votes. It's about interest. In some cases, even in Northern, we tell you before the fact that you are in Northern doesn't mean you get my support. Or even in Southern, for the fact that you are in Southern doesn't mean you get my support. When you don't have the ideology mm. that could move either his interest, that of his family, and that of the nation forward. Okay. And you may end up not getting the support. Fantastic. I, I just want to get your thoughts on um, the influence of the governors uh, as far as this primary is concerned. Uh, because that seems to have, that played out in the uh, PDP primaries. And we saw it significantly in the APC primaries. So when people say the governors, in a sense, are the real owners of the party, does that resonate with you? Oh, they know. The governors are the owners of their structure of the structure in their constituency and in the per part of the case of the governors their constituencies are their states any governor that knows the sonos will have 100 percent of the support of all the voting delegates in the states so that you as an aspirant in the presidential race, need not bother yourself going to see the, and the delegates one by one. All you need to do is to try to synchronize with the governors of the state. As soon as the governors of the state are comfortable with working with you, you can be rest assured to get a minimum of 90% of the voting delegates in the state. It is from this perspective that the political class are looking at it that the governors are the owners of the polity because they own the um, delegates, they own the establishment in their state, the political establishment in their state. In the case of PDP, you know, before the primaries of the presidential primaries of PDP, you will recall that several pre uh, presidential aspirants 
came to Edo State to see Mr. Governor. And I think there's also one that refused to come see Mr. Governor. So at the end of the day, even though the Edo State PDP delegates, even though they, they had two parallel delegates and lists, and even though none of them voted, but the influence of the governor of the state still came to play in that he did everything humanly possible to ensure that the delegates from his end voted. But at the end of the day, nobody voted. So, and you will also recall that we can said that his, his certain brothers betrayed him. Yeah. Because he, he hoped so much in them that they will support him because they are from the same region. But the intrigues in politics is that if I'm not comfortable with your leadership, I might not support you to become a leader over me. If I suspect that you will be a tyrant, an oppressor, then there is that tendency that I will not support you to lead me because I know I might suffer in the process of you being a leader over me. Yeah. Then in the case of PDP, it was obvious from the beginning that most of the uh, APC, sorry, it was obvious that from the beginning most of the APC governors favored Bola Metinubu. Because one way or another, he has been of help, of assistance to them, both materially and logistically, as the case may be. So I think it was that they felt that it was time for them to pay back, you know? So whatever the situation is, they didn't want to listen. Their interest was trying to maintain their integrity. If they roll this man in favor, they feel that there is need for them to repay back that favor now that he needs them. The uh, governors are the owners of the political structures in their states. And we have 36 states in Nigeria. That 36 state is led by 36 governors. In the case of those governors, the, and those parties that have government in their state. Yeah. So as a result, for you to get anything, any um, support from a state party executive, mm -hmm. you need to work it through the governor of that state. So, that is the best and easiest way to go okay. in relation to this. All right, let, let, let's quickly look at um, a very, very controversial aspect of the APC presidential primaries. The national chairman of the party coming out to announce that a consensus candidate has been found in the person of the Senate President. Going further to say, Mr. President has given his backing. Only for the state governors to approach Mr. President, Mr. President said otherwise. Um, some have described the action of the national chairman of the APC as being a coup in some sense against the background of the structures and the arrangement that was put in place for this uh, party's convention to hold. I I'd like to get your take on this. Yes, I will agree with you. It was an attempted coup uh, that didn't work because when you have people who were fully ready, not on the basis of intimidating others. Uh, sometimes you can't, you can't make it work. But I'll come back quickly to that. I just want to appreciate my brother and also observe at one section. Now, I do not believe that governors really own party. If they don't have relationship with those who run the day-to-day -day party arrangements, if you think you are lord, you lord over, you'll be a governor without a delegate. We have seen governors without delegates. And two, let me also say and observe my brother, when he said, oh, Satin is Do as an example. Uh, Do didn't have a fashion with what court told us. At the last time, court gave his order. The Danobi led fashion voted. We saw it. We saw them voting. So please, I just want Edo people not to be confused. Because if well, let's, uh, let's, let's good, I just want us yes, I don't you, because, you, you, just trust uh, with the arrangement we have, because he went over there, let's not get our people confused. Okay. They were voting, voting took place, some people voted, and the law as today told us who are in charge of PDP in Edo State. Now, however, the attempted coup that didn't work, it cannot work. When you plan and you didn't plan well, you will plan to fail. Now it got to show that not even a national chairman owns the party as many have claimed over the time. Now people like our national chairman, Mr. Adamu, he came because he felt 
He was even one of the people who make recommendation on how we can have a good party and what have you. And he submitted them before we knew what was happening, became a national chairman. Yes, he had become believing that experience may count based on the, the report he brought together. But you that brought report, you almost did what no one ever done before. Now, they were able and the people stood, not just only the governors. They were already in heat that he himself couldn't even stand. To an extent, we had a run home. And they have to go and bring him, some governors have to go and bring him back from his house midnight and say, you go nowhere. Now, this is democracy. In democracy, you must carry the people along. Yeah. When you don't carry the people along, you want to be dictatorial, you want to show that you are loved because you are going to be given a sly opportunity, you will be dead with. If not, I'm not saying by combat or physical fighting, but by way of structure, by way of planning, you will realize that you are on the ground. But I, must, I also thank God that he realizes the fact that it was almost a mistake. Even the person he projected and said this was a sole candidate himself, I'm sure went to the field too and got 152 votes and he was happy. You saw when he got the vote, he was smiling and even with the congratulatory message, he realizes that Asiwaju was his leader. So if a master who has been nice to you beats you, it won't pain you because you believe he deserves it. If it was another person, you know, who had who, who are taking the victory, I'm sure some of them wouldn't have been okay. But you saw invariably all of them, apart from one from the South Side, I did not even see when they were doing the final arrangement. All of them all unanimously celebrated and congratulated him. And two, uh, my brother Eric also said, yes, sometimes it's a time of favor. That is why I said before, it's an individual thing. There are some who don't know how to say thank you, no matter what you have done for them. We have seen governors who, when they get to power, those who brought them to power, they mess them up black and blue. And even if the person comes tomorrow and wants anything from them, they will not even mind them. Okay. So those who can say thank you, can say thank you. That was why I said sometimes it's very good when you are having a team. You must have not only first 11, you should have up to three, four, five team on a spec. In case this team tells you, I am weak, I cannot play today, I will play tomorrow. You can even tell him to wait for next year. Why others are playing and they will play well. Okay, let's, let's quickly conclude uh, this segment of uh, conversations on the uh, emergence of Ahmed Bola Tinubu as APC presidential candidate ahead of the 2023 election. Um, what major talking point we, we, we've seen in recent time has also been the issue of uh, the role of money. I've heard people say, look, while other aspirants were wooing delegates, but was wooing aspirants. In other words, while the aspirants were buying delegates, uh, the eventual winner was buying the aspirants. Uh, did, did, that, did, that, did that make sense to you at all, Derek, quickly? Well, more or less, in that uh, the issue of politi Nigeria politics, even though it has come of age, but in characteristics, it still behaves as if it's nascent. We are very sentimental. We are very sentimental people. And as a result, um, the politics tend to reflect these characteristics. Nigeria is where it is today because of sentiment. But having said that, the national leader of APC, who started his campaign for presidency way longer than any other aspirant, has um, put all the round pegs in the round hole and the square pegs in the square hole. Because he was ahead of the other aspirants, the issue of delegates, he has logged you have, you know, no done with it and dusted it. Then he had to move to the message, which was really the aspirants. Like I said earlier, some of the APC governors were made by Tinubu, were made by him. And if I made you, I expect you to reciprocate however the situation is in terms of the Nigeria polity do. So, he was able to have that block vote already. And um, you will recall that from the beginning, he has told Mr. President, 
I don't re actually require you to support me. Just stay neutral, and I will get the tickets. And this is the fight he has been fighting, that Mr. President should stay neutral. I know some people we are trying to force the Northern agenda on Mr. President. You know, so he strategically passed a message to the president to remind him of how this whole business started and the commitment he, he has made over time to himself. Okay. So he has been very pragmatic in terms of getting the APC tickets. And the pragmatism paid off at the long run. That however the obstacle he faced, he was still able to clinch the ticket very conveniently. He got more than 50% of total vote cast, you know. And people are saying that a lot of money went down the drain. If it is true, <laughs> I wasn't there, that uh, his delegate was bought with a sum of $50,000. We are looking at about $200 million, you know, to get that ticket. And that is a whole lot of money. <laughs> Just being the arena of speculation, like you said, you were not there. It's based on what you heard. But I'd like to get your take on this. And then quickly on um, the, the uh, Vice President Yemi Ushibajo's factor in all of this, uh, in this contest. I've heard a lot of people say a lot of things and what have you. But um, I've also heard people say things like, well, he was just there uh, to make the whole drama more interesting yeah let me get to take on this and very quickly you know you said before i get there yeah on the issue of finance i know my honorable brother uh, will always bring that in but thank god the fcc was all around yeah and efcc till now have not got any pdp sharing money mm. also i'm sure they have not so got any apc sharing money okay but i don't think the fact that money wasn't involved is in there. Yeah. Certainly money was involved. Yeah. But you know our And in large chunks. Maybe. Yes, in large chunks. Yes. Anyway. Yeah. But it's it is what it is. Maybe. It is what it is. Maybe. Because if very brief one shares, all of them would have shared. Mm. And for everybody to share, and I still want, just as he said, meaning one was a step ahead. Mm. And at that level, we will give it to those who have won at the board party. Now, coming back to your main question as it goes to do with the vice president. I have always prayed all my life that God should so much help me not to betray those who assisted me while I'm trying well, to was, was that is an issue of betrayal? Yes. Now, let, let me now tell was you. What's an issue of it? Let me now Suppose it was a plan uh, from the beginning you know, be just to make the drama more interesting. If it was a good plan. Yes. I'm sure at the point that those who believe, those who said you have contributed so much to us, you are our leader, I am stepping down for you to go on. I'm sure that is 200 and something vote would have been added to that of us. Would it have made any difference? Sure, it, it would have. What difference would it have made? It made it more interesting. Mm. Now, let me tell you, the fight they gave to him made him stronger, made him fought harder. They gave him tension. No doubt, you will see him at the very beginning when he came. He has some little tension. It's normal. You know, when you are facing an election, there's always an uncertainty. How can it happen? Because people over the time have been taking off balance. Yeah. But thank God he got the victory. They wanted to fool him. Even while the president, the vice president was talking and wounded the delegate. He said so many things that look derogatory to say, I am not fit. I am not fit at that dying minute. So let us even go beyond the issue of it was arranged. But thank God it was obvious to him that all he had gotten to politically had truly be a way of support, 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 support. Okay. Because him, as a vice president, you didn't even come second. You came tall. Yeah. And even the person who gave you a flag off, the person of Rotimi Amechi, was not just 2015 uh, votes. It was a kind of a little bit loud. It all, you just got to show that really you didn't have a structure, okay. you didn't have a base. All right. But all I right. want to say it's just yeah. an opportunity for those of my folks who are coming mm. that we should learn. From other people's mistakes? Yes, from other people's mistakes. All right. Derek, last word from you. In relation to what? In relation to 2023. Well, 2023 is a long time from now. <laughs> we have, like, and that's the uh, election. Yes. We have like eight, nine months to yeah. prepare yeah. For, before the election. Yeah. And now we advise politicians, those with a little goodwill and are contesting should try to build their goodwill. Mm -hmm. Because 2023 will be about goodwill. If the elect electorates are comfortable with you, they will give you the votes. If they are not, you will not get it. No matter the amount you pay yes. in the field, they will not vote for you. We have seen it happen in the day before. Yeah, yeah. People pay 10,000 naira, and the other paid nothing. 
And the ghost of God, let me talk now. Okay. And right. those that paid nothing got the day. Mm. So okay. politicians should work All right. on their good All right. so I like I like us to I like us to take that out uh, with this. Um, th thank you very much. Uh, we'll take a short break. Uh, State TMI Thursday. Uh, nine months to the election, but it's going to be a very very interesting period for us. But we must continue to work as a people to drive the core issues, drive the real issues into the subconsciousness of our people to take a stand. 2023 is not an election where you sit on the fence. We must collectively take our country back and put it on the trajectory of peace, progress, unity, and development. We'll take a short break.